as you're all probably aware right now, there has been a major outage across systems, across enterprise systems, across industries, across banking sectors, stock exchanges, aviation sector, etc. The most talked news right now is the Microsoft's blue screen of death. For most of us, blue screen of death used to be a usual visual when we used to have Windows machines like back 10 to 15 years ago. I have grown during the time when we had a lot of these blue screen of death and we had to reinstall or reimage our desktops or laptops. Today, we are unfortunately seeing somewhat similar event. In this video, we are going to discuss deeper on how we can recover from these blue screen of death based on the recommendations if you're running systems on-prem or if you're running it on AWS or Azure. Let's get deeper and look at how we can resolve this with various workarounds. Let's get started. Before we could talk about how to recover our Windows VMs, let's talk about the issue. Today, a lot of enterprise systems and individuals experienced the blue screen of death, basically a blue screen in the Windows machines, which forbids you from going into the laptop or rebooting your operating system. It just and it just goes into an indefinite loop of restarting. This resulted in a major outage all across the industry, which includes the aviation and also the hospital industry. So the root cause has been narrowed down to a particular version of a patch, which is rolled out by a company called as CrowdStrike. So CrowdStrike is a security company which publishes different agents, patches across different vendors or operating systems. And in this case, all these issues were specific to the Windows operating systems because that is where the kernel level Falcon agent, which was running on these Windows servers, which were affected. Usually CloudStrike releases patches and these patches are installed on the servers or VMs so that they can protect these VMs from older versions of the software, which can result into risk or compliance issues later. So what really happened is this particular Falcon agent, which was running on the Windows servers, they had an issue with a patch and due to which the user was not able to go beyond the blue screen. So CrowdStrike came up with the advisory and then they have created a block statement with different workaround steps. They also have specific documentations around how to recover your systems if you're running it on AWS or Azure. So let's break down these recovery measures one by one. So the first one which CloudStrike says is, and I'm going to cover all the Azure and the AWS ones as well. So let's first look at what CrowdStrike says. So CrowdStrike says that the workaround for individual host is to reboot the host. And also you need to have them rebooted in the safe mode, right? Once the safe mode is initiated, you need to navigate to a particular directory in your registry, and then you have to delete that particular file. So this is a file which is like star.sys. You need to remove this particular file and then reboot the VM in order to have these servers recovered. So this problematic patch which they had, which spoiled the servers, had to be removed and that is what we are doing here. So we are locating a particular file which is creating this issue and then we are deleting it. This is one of the major workarounds which they have given for individual host. If you're having public cloud providers, there are slightly different variations, but um, obviously you can roll it back to a particular snapshot before a particular point in time. Right. If let's say you were running your workloads on Azure, there is something called Azure Backup. If you're not sure what Azure Backup is, take a look at Azure Backups. You can leverage Azure Backup to recover a particular VM at a particular point in time. So if you go to Backup Center, there is an option here. Um, if you have not taken a backup, I would highly suggest you to take a backup. Um, if you're running it on Azure, you can definitely use Azure Backup to backup your workloads. In this case, let's say Azure VMs, you could have backed it up uh, in a particular vault. And these backups can be in instantly restored, right? And your VMs will be recovered instantly, right? This is the first option, which is the easiest option. If you had done the backups, right? You can restore it from a backup. The next one is, of course, using the Azure portal. Uh, and that's what is defined here in the Azure status here. So if you go to status.azure.com, you can see some um, information about what can be done to recover these servers. So the option which uh, Microsoft has given is to go to the Azure portal and then attempt to restart these VMs. Either you can do that from the Azure portal or you can go to the Azure CLI or the Azure shell to do that. Right. In addition to it, some customers have mentioned that there were 15 reboots which were done in order to bring the servers back. So which is another uh, thing which people have done to recover these servers back. 
The next option which is recommended here of course is to use the Azure backup which I just mentioned. You can look at the um, uh, page here on how to restore the Azure VM data in the Azure portal. You can take a look at this. Uh, there is a step by step guide on how you can restore um, the data from the Azure backup. The final option is to attempt to repair the OS disk which is somewhat similar to what we did here. So we will have to do similar steps in the Azure VMs. You will have to have the disk detached, right? And then you need to try to delete these um, uh, disk attached to, let's say you have this particular disk, um, which is the operating system disk for that particular VM. You can attach it to another um, uh, VM and then log in there and then delete that particular file, which is in this particular directory, right? Once you have deleted it, you can de detach it from the, um, um, the backup VM, attach it to the original VM, and and you should be able to restart or reboot that particular machine right so these are some options which we have um, of course there is also an option for aws if you are running your workloads on aws right and if you're using amazon ebs you will have to go to um, amazon ebs if you're running windows workloads on these uh, ec2 instances you can go to these ebs volumes and then you can go and detach these volumes attach them to a vm which is healthy and then go and remove that particular uh, file from the path and then you can attach these again back to the original VM and then start it. So the steps for uh, attaching, detaching, all these are given uh, here. You can attach these existing EBS volumes to a newer instance, delete it and then reattach it to the original instance and then reboot it, right? So these are the different ways in which you can recover your VMs. I'll just summarize it again. So initially, if you have an individual server or individual host, you will have to reboot that in a safe mode. And then you will have to go navigate to this particular path to remove the offending file. If you're using Azure or AWS, you will have to mount these disks into a healthy VM and then you will have to remove them and then attach it to the original VM and then re re recover them back. Of course, the best option uh, for you is the backups. If you had backups, you could have recovered uh, from these backups and Azure has a very nice way of recovering um, VMs from a backup directly using the backup center. You can go and restore these using these steps. I will leave the links for all these URLs, whatever we discussed here in the description below. Do take a look at it and do let me know if you have any queries. I will also try to look at and then see if let's say your uh, machines are impacted. If you were not impacted, do let me know that as well, um, right? I did not get impacted. Um, I mean, in this particular machine, this is a Mac, of course, this did not get impacted. My work machine also did not get impacted because I did not restart my VMs or restart my machines. But do let me know how did it affect you in the comment section below, we can discuss further. I hope this particular video was interesting. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.